Hey, what's up, YouTubes? We are here in Colorado with four times world's strongest man, Brian Shaw, and I am super excited to show you guys and to learn myself. Today, Brian's gonna be helping me out with deadlift. As I've showed you guys before, it's, it's my Achilles heel. Everyone knows when they're competing against me, like I'm, I'm gonna hang with everything. I'll do great in a lot of stuff, and then I'm gonna eat points in the deadlift. So instead of avoiding it and all that stuff, you know, I'm doing my best to attack it head on, to do, to do exactly what it takes to get better. And you have had record after record in deadlift. One of my favorite moments in Strongman was watching you when I was an amateur at the Arnold, when yep. you pulled the Hummer Tire deadlift. Yeah. And that was, I think that's also the first time I've seen anybody like nosebleed live. <laughs> that was, uh, was that the one I, I pulled with the torn bicep? Yes, was yes. It, that was, it was savage. It was pretty ridiculous, yeah. So, but, um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I mean, deadlift for me, you know, like you said, it's one of those things that's, that's been really good. Um, I actually had a pretty, pretty bad hamstring tear at the Arnold in 2019, which was uh, horrible. And then we were filming the TV show at that time. And so right. I didn't really do the recovery the way I should. I kind of tried to jump back in. I mean, literally, and you remember this, like, yeah. we were on the road, what? Three, four days after I tore it, yeah. and I couldn't tie my shoes, remember? Right, but but he also did try and flip a hay barrel, a big a bar barrel of hay, he Not tried probably. to flip. Yeah. He did it one-legged, he got it over. <laughs> I, I, I think I beat Nick at that. Recovery, <laughs> recovery wise, yeah, you, not you smart. were yeah, right, yeah. right. So, anyways, I, that's been kind of a, a thing that um, you know has got me a little bit, but I'm building back up from that as well. Still, still, I mean, hamstring injuries like that can linger if you let them linger, and I didn't do the correct thing. I will admit that. But um, anyway, it's gonna be fun, man. I mean, yeah. it's gonna be fun to dissect it. Uh, you know, cause I'm kind of working on some things with my deadlift too. So, you know, anytime you can get together um, with another strong guy that can train and, and you know, bounce ideas, it's always good. So, yeah. I mean, if I can help you out, so right. be it, man. But like well, you I said, know specifically, like, cause we're some, two of the biggest guys in strong, man. Totally. You have, I think you have longer arms than I do, yep. but you know, like it's a lot of the same levers, a lot, a lot of the same types of uh, ways that we're going to be able to get in a good position. Yeah. Plus your, you're, you're like the mad scientist of strongman, you know? <laughs> like, you're like, you know, all Well, you all have to work. It. Yeah, that's exactly right. And a lot of people don't realize that with a deadlift, you have to work with your leverages, right? So if your legs are a little bit longer, your upper body's, you know, shorter, longer, you know, everybody's not gonna be exactly the same. And, and too often, I personally think, it's a cookie cutter mold right. that's pushed on these lifts. And it's like, well, if, if you don't do it this way, you're wrong. Yeah. And so, you know, even for me, when I was getting started, I was told in the beginning, you have to deadlift with your feet super narrow, mm -hmm. super narrow. And I was like, well, I'm, I'm six foot eight. Like, how am I gonna, like, how can I even do that? Right. But I tell you what, I tried at the beginning and then you, you, you kind of have to go through this trial and error and it didn't work for me. When you switched your stance and you, you kind of like, revolutionized the way other people look at it. I remember every other big guy that I was around was like, oh, well, if Brian gets to go wide, we should yeah. all, and I, I, I can't tell you how many times I had that conversation with people where they were like, well, Brian's wide, so I do this. It's just like, like Eddie kind of made everyone feel like they had to roll the bar. Sure. You know, Eddie, yeah. Eddie rolls the bar, so everyone, but you made it to where people kind of accepted wider stances yeah. might work for a lot of guys. At that, and, and that's crazy. A lot of people don't realize that. Like, I, the amount of hate that I took for that. <laughs> it's like, that's not how you deadlift. What are you doing? Why are your right. feet so wide? It's stupid. It's you just show them the world like, records and it's like, and argue with that. Yeah, and that's, yeah. that's where, you know, you have to be willing at times to, to step outside the box, right? right. And, and do something different because it makes sense. But I would think about it, as you know, hours and hours and I'd watch videos and critique this and critique that. And for me, it seemed to work. Right, and then like later on, I've had conversations with you know with guys like Ed Cohen, and he was like, "Well, Brian, that's where you're the strongest. You're using your strengths to get stronger in the deadlift. Right. It makes sense." Or um, uh, Kelly Surrett, uh, another guy was like, "He's like, I can't tell you how." And this is a guy that deals with injuries and problems, and that's he's like, the "Whole thing." Yeah. Even even I mean, I felt like that was a huge compliment to me for him to say, "Hey, you saying that and doing it. I'm so happy you did that." 
because it helped a lot of people. Yeah. You know, because again, there it's a cookie cutter mold, right? Like, right. hey, you have to do it this way, this way, this way. And and sometimes people end up hurting themselves because they're trying to fit into that mold mm -hmm. when they should. Right. So it's, and it's now it feels thing. like there's two molds and a lot of people need to kind of break it down to where they realize there's a lot more it it's not it's not sumo deadlift totally. versus mini deadlift. Exactly. You know? it, there's a lot of spot in between and for me, I've had to find like, it's just a little bit narrower than yours. Yep. I have a longer upper body and not as longer arms and totally. trying to get in a better spot. But that's what we're gonna talk about today. Yeah. I'm, I'm focusing a lot on not pulling off of my toes, which is huge for me. Yep. Getting it off, my toes off the air, which is why I wear new shoes now when I, yep. when I pull, wear loose, loose toed shoes. And, and making sure that I'm actually using my upper back instead of my lower back. Perfect. And that'll be a big focus today for me. And I'm excited, guys. I'm, I've, I've been wanting to work on this and to work with Brian is a huge compliment. And I'm not gonna tell you how huge because I don't want his head to get any bigger. <laughs> who's, who's got the bigger head? I'm talking about figuratively. <laughs> not Brian's really. head barely fits in the room. He's <laughs> like, you know who won the Shaw Classic? You know what the Shaw Classic was named after? I mean, that's basically <laughs> everything. Everything I have said is exactly that. <laughs> I mean, stop saying it on camera. <laughs> Right. If it was true, I wouldn't say it to you guys. So. <laughs> anyway, stay tuned. Let's learn how to deadlift from four times world's strongest man. Enjoy the show, y'all. In order to get down there, yeah, you feel like when you drop your hips, your knees have to come out. Right. Gotcha. And that means my arms have to be wide, er, than like, so like I'm, I'm already, my hands already wider than your hands. Yeah. You're a half an inch taller than me. So, so the question, the question, my question to you would be, is as you go through your training, does that loosen up? Yes, it loosens up a little bit. Okay. But not much. enough. To where it's not an issue. So you feel like you're still super. Now you feel like that tightness is coming from glutes, hamstrings, lower back, hip. all your hips. It's, yeah, for, for right now it's hip, yeah. Okay. I'm sure the others will start to bother me sooner or later, but right now it's hip. When you're coming back to get down into position, your that is happening. So your arms are wider. Yeah. They're wider than I would like to see them, yeah. potentially, if you could figure out that, like how to get down there a little bit easier. But the other thing you're not doing is your, your upper back is not locking in. So you're starting to pull with your upper back open. Okay. Right, so like at the beginning, you know, typically for me, like, like if I'm going through a deadlift training session and I work to get to my upper weights, what I would look at for myself would be where does my back start to break down? So if you're, you're obviously you would like, ideally, you would like to pull back into position and then as you start to drive, your hips come up and your shoulders come up right. at the same time. So your hips don't fire over like this, but what would happen is if you, if you don't, like if this is your upper back and you don't drive your hips back and lock this up, this, like you're gonna get pulled over more. Right. So as, as the weight gets heavier, in theory, assuming this would hold, like eventually your upper back is gonna get stressed which when you open up your vertebrae like that, it's gonna go more to your lower back. Right. So as the weight gets heavier, because that's not locked up, you would get a lower back I think a, a big reason why my upper back doesn't lock, why I don't lock it, especially at this weight, is because it makes it 100 times harder to get into position. Yes. My back locked means my arms can't move to my knees. So what I would, and you could try this or not try it, it's up to you, um, I'm just being honest, but, what I would say is, I would try because that right now, you're, what I would say is you're having to compromise your form yeah. to lift the bar from this height. I would recommend putting it on like a, a two mats maybe or something like that so that you can practice, practice where you're not right. having to compromise that bottom part. And then as you, as you work your way into it being more comfortable, you could drop a mat and then drop a mat. So you're saying the opposite. See, a lot of people say overcorrect. A lot of people will tell you 
to do a pulse at a deficit sure. to make you get used to being down, and that's what I have been told. Sure. You're saying the opposite to to have your best form with a higher pull, that way your body gets used to the right way, and then slowly lower it down. So that makes a lot of sense. And if you guys, I don't know if you can understand it exactly, it's maybe complicated for some of you guys, but that's the exact opposite of what a lot of people will tell you, you know? Instead of, if you have a hard time getting a position, make it harder on yourself and still keep training the wrong way, make it a little easier on, on yourself to be in the right form, to have the right like muscle groups working, to have your body in a good position, and learn what the right way feels like, and then work your way back down. That's, I don't think I've ever been told that ever. So, take notes for that right there. Let's just make it so you feel the movement. Yeah. I don't care, right? Like, yeah. and that's the thing that like, and you, I think know this enough after lifting with me. One of the things that I never care about is ego lifting. Right. I don't, no, I just, sure. I literally don't care. Like, and guys will come in, you know, not very often, of course, because I train, I train very, you know, in my, in my gym, but I've had guys come in before and that's what they think they're going to do. And like, at the end of the day, not to be mean, but are you really gonna impress me with what you can put on the right, bar? Like right. that's not a mean statement, it's just like I don't care. And you're not especially here for that. especially if you're lifting it with compromised form. Right. Right? Like, I don't care. It's like, well, I would rather see you drop the weight, lift it with correct form, and get stronger. Yeah. Right? So it's it's um, and I'm not saying that about you, I'm just saying that about like the you know, the situation. It's like it's a good lesson for people though, because a lot of times there's guys that go to the gym and they think if they don't get three, four, five, six plates on the bar. Right. They're, they need, they're almost like trying to show off for the people in the gym. Exactly. Right, it's like, hey, look at how strong I am. Right. But they're lifting it with crap form or they're doing a squat and they're doing a quarter squat because they can't handle it. Right, weight, right, you know? right. So it's like, let's just, um, sometimes it's even good, it's good for me, it's good for you, it's good for all of us to say, hey, I'm gonna work on this and put some real work in. Yeah. But it's like the, the you know, what do you actually put out a video versus reality? Right. Right, and a lot of times it's like, it's okay. It's okay that we don't come in. I mean, a lot of people think, I'll post a training video or something, and they'll say, well, Brian, that's crap. Look at how much weight, you're so weak. Look right, at this. Right. And it's like, you have no context of what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, what I'm trying to build up for. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so it's like, at the end of it, the judgment should be only on the contest. Exactly. And not the prep to get there. Right. And then I think that's the, that's the one thing that we have that keeps us to where we don't have to ego lift. Yeah. Like the guys that go to the gym, that's their show. Like this is, my, my competition is hopefully that right cute now. girl sees me deadlift. Totally. For me, I mean, we just, at Worlds, I pulled 7.59 for reps. So I pulled it for one and then stopped. But like knowing that I can pull more than that doesn't make me feel weird about making sure that I can pull three plates properly. No. You know? Man. No one wants to see me. Okay. <laughs> I think that's it because you can still get tight, but your back is now like this versus this. Yeah. You, it, this that's that's the difference though. Yeah. It's literally like, I mean, and I didn't do the videos from the side, but it's like you were even at your tightest at the bottom there, you're probably about like that. Yeah. And this you're like this. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like you're you're structurally much better, and it's probably gonna put the load where you're not you're not feeling it as much. Well, I can feel it already. Like, it's, it's straight to my butt and my back. Perfect. Instead of, like, low back. Let's roll with that, man. So, I mean, you're, you're at uh, two and a quarter. Okay. Two and a quarter ele elevated. So it's 11 and, uh, 11 and a quarter inch hole. So you could easily then go down three quarters of an inch. Right. So would you say, like, stick to this, do this for, like, a couple weeks at this height, and then come down? Or would you say, like, do this at this height, and then do like lightweight uh, uh, negatives or stay away from negatives because we want our form to be good. I would, if you were going to throw negatives in, I mean, you, what you could do is potentially do those to one not less. So oh, you okay. kind of open yourself up. Okay, so like, it's not really a negative, it's just a negative for my standard. Correct, yep. So that, you're, almost, you're almost like working yourself down with that too. That's, that's really good. Okay. I think that might help. Because wow. then you almost kind of go to that, it's just a little bit more. 
but right. you're going down just a touch more, so it kind of makes you open up, but oh. not open up too much. Yeah. You know? And then, then as soon as that starts feeling good, then maybe from there, you then start doing the pulls. Pulls from there, and, and then, then the negatives, the next one. From one now. Yeah. 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 I like that. Smart. So that was amazing. I don't even know. Like I, I'm so appreciative of all the tips and everything. Going through all that, I felt like I, I actually got better. I've lifted weights as my only job for about 10 years. Sure. And I felt like today I got way better. And I know like my my path to get better is lined out. I understand, you know, what I need to do. And I just uh, grateful and I feel like a lot of people are gonna learn a lot from this sure. and you know thank you so much for having us here it was 100 percent brother I awesome. love it I uh, I'm really happy I'm really happy with what you did you know and sometimes as you well know it's tough to take a step back yeah. and say you know what I don't know if I like that or that will you know be an ego boosting type of thing right. but sometimes it's the right thing to do and I mean it's it's kind of like just looking at it, right? It's like I've seen, you know, enough lifting, as you said, like over the years. But again, sometimes when you can't look at yourself necessarily, yeah. it helps to get a pair of eyes from somebody that's seen a lot of lifting and say, hey, what about this? Mm -hmm. What about that? You know? Right. And sometimes it's, I mean, at the end of the day, this is really good for you, but it, it makes sense. It just makes sense to say, hey, let's do something you're not gonna injure yourself. You're actually gonna get stronger and we're gonna make your body adapt to a stimulus. And yeah. I think that at the end of the day, man, I'm really happy. You looked to me, at least visually, like you were able to lock in your position a lot better, more comfortable. You, especially on the last set there, really attacked the lift more. Yeah. It was kind of like you almost had to get that point and quit thinking so much about the setup yeah. to be like, hey, I'm, I'm just gonna lift this weight, right? Yeah. And then you, 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 uh, you know, you put in good work and now what you've done is you've gone into a training session and got better, put the work in and you walk away stronger, right? right? So now you eat, uh, go recover, relax, whatever. And you know that you put in that work to help your body. You're not hurting right now, right? No, no, I feel great. Upper so, back sore, butt's a little sore, but that's like exactly where you want to feel it. Put the work in, yeah. I am, I am lightheaded right now, though. Are you? Yeah, at the elevation, yeah. it caught me like by surprise. All of a sudden, I was just like, Whoa. <laughs> it Whoa. is, it is, it is definitely one of those things, especially you know when you're doing working sets and reps, not not uh, a maximum weight. It can certainly catch up. But I'm, I'm proud of you, man. I think you did awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I really appreciate it, and I hope you guys learned some stuff. Obviously, if you want to learn about computers, we go to Bill Gates. If you want to learn about deadlift. Go to the four times world strongest man right here. So thank you guys for tuning in. Stay strong, stay pretty. We'll see y'all again later.